What is going on, good people of YouTube? It is me, Chavez, back with another prize picks video for you. Today is Monday, January 30th, 2023. We have eight games on this NBA slate, and I want to get right into it because I have quite a few plays that I want to share with you today. Most of these plays, you can leverage player props, meaning you aren't stuck to just playing one prop for this player. So I try to pick players that you can really double down, triple down, and in terms of uh, their line. So if you like a player's PRA, digging into those, you also might like his points, you also might like his first half PRA. So this gives you the this gives you the option to spread out your props across a few different lineups. So you don't have to play the same point prop or the same fantasy score prop in every lineup. You can kind of hedge your props. It just gives you a better chance of, of profiting today. So without further ado, I want to start with this with this dude you see on the screen right now. It is Jaden Ivey over uh, 15 points. This line was at 15 and a half, and now it dropped to 15 points. Um, I still like it at 15 points, and I'll tell you why really quickly here, because Dallas gives up a ton of free throw opportunities, and something that Jaden Ivey does consistently is drive and take shots at the rim, basically. 51% of his shots are coming from this area here. And so what this can cause, uh, it can cause a lot of foul trouble for, for Dallas, or he can just plain, plain and simply score. If he scores and draws a foul, that's an and one. And because Dallas does not have a formidable front court right now, I like his odds of getting to the free throw line tonight and scoring you know, three to six times. So he likes to drive. His uh, his free throw attempts are trending upwards. Dallas gives up quite a few free throws, meaning they foul, either they foul uh, in the paint, maybe they're fouling, you know, behind the arc, which is even better because if Jalen Jaden Ivey attempts a three, gets fouled, he's shooting threes, he's shooting three free throws, or he's shooting one free throw on top of the three he just hit. I like his prospects today of getting over uh, getting over 15 points. So he needs 16 points. The benefit of this being at a 15 instead of a 15 and a half is in the worst he can do, well, I shouldn't say the worst. The worst he can do is actually not hit his prop. But if he gives you 15, it doesn't destroy your slip. That play just kind of gets voided out because he got hooked, so. I like that a lot better than the 15 and a half point prop. So first play on the day is Jaden Ivey over his 15 points. Second play on the day, digging into the research, I really, really like Draymond Green's over on his PRA, 23 and a half. Now, I don't have to tell you that Draymond Green is good at playing basketball. He's good at contributing in all, um, you know, all aspects of the offense that that Golden State runs, but one thing that really stood out to me, one thing that really stood out to me when looking at previous game logs, I checked out the stat line for DeMontis Sabonis when Sacramento played OKC back on the 20th. So Sabonis chipped in with 18 points, 13 rebounds, and 14 assists for I think that's 45 I think that's 49 fantasy points or 49 PRA 14 27 plus 18 45 45 PRA now the reason I like this and the reason I'm talking about DeMontis Sabonis when I like um, Draymond Green is um, these two players are pretty similar in the fact that they do a lot of a lot of things for their teams. They they contribute in multiple ways and they impact the game in multiple ways. I look at that stat line for Sabonis, and those are the, all those things Draymond Green does, except scoring. But we already know that Draymond Green is not a prolific scorer. But if he can grab you in or around the same stat line in terms of his rebounds and assists, he's already over his PRA. So. 
I do like Draymond Green tonight. Now, Wiggins is back. He will be playing tonight. He's more than likely going to be on a minutes restriction. So I don't feel like Wiggins will impact Draymond Green's uh, production here. Also, keep in mind, you have... This will probably be the fastest pace game on the slate. You have OKC running the third fastest pace in the NBA, and you have Golden State running at the fastest pace in the NBA. So what do we know about fast paced games? Fast pace equals more possessions for each offense, more shot opportunities, more chances for shooters to make threes, to hit shots, more assists, more rebounds. Also, the more you shoot, chances are, you know, your 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 missed shot percentage goes up. So rebounds, defensive rebounds, offensive rebounds, put backs at the rim. So a lot of different ways you can score if you're Draymond Green here. So I like his PRA at 23 and a half and I like the over on that. And then my final pick in terms of just like the core that I'm going with tonight, the three players that I like the most, I like Chris Paul over his PRA of 31 and a half. Now, why do I like his PRA more than I like his points and assists or just assists? I like his assists by themselves for sure. However, there's a bit of a discrepancy here on prize picks. So go ahead and just add up all of these real quick. So he needs 18 to hit his point prop. He needs five to hit his rebound prop. That's 23. And he needs 10 to hit his assist prop. That's 33 that he needs to hit these. His PRA is currently set to 31 and a half. That's 1.5 discrepancy on the PRA. I have already locked this one in in a five-man flex here because I think that's just a missed sight on prize picks. So I like that PRA line for Chris Paul a lot. Chances are he can hit this with just points and assists. But he has been rebounding very well over the last four games. He's 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 exceeding he's exceeding his season average of I think it's 4.8 rebounds a game for Chris Paul. He's exceeding it. He's playing over his head when it comes to rebounds. And that's okay. Because even if Chris Paul regresses to the mean, he's still going to give you five rebounds a game. Four to five rebounds a game. And that's still good enough to help him get over that low PRA line of 30, 31 and a half. So those are my three main plays on the slate that I, I just feel very good about these three plays. Now, in addition to what we talked about earlier in the first video, I still like Kuzma over his 23 and a half points playing the Spurs who give up a ton of production to everybody. And they also play very fast. They're very young, uh, but they uh, they're just not a good team right now. And then D'Angelo Russell is still going to be in my slips. Price Picks continues to roll his point prop at 19 and a half. He is not here on the three point prop, which I would love him to be there at two and a half, but we'll take his points. Now I have two, <laughs> I have three like honorable mentions here. You do not have to play these players i am not considering these core plays or main plays core plays are ivy green and paul now i have two plays that you may not be looking at but just check these out real quick De'Aaron fox under first half points De'Aaron fox is a notorious slow starter at least this season we check out his first half lines here over on points he has gone under this five straight games and only hit this one out of his last 10 he just starts slow he just starts slow and if there was a line that you would attack it'd be his second half because he just turns it on this is what some players do so looking at his first half line I think 12 and a half I believe it's set to 12 and a half He's come close, 11 and 12. He went over at 13. And let's go ahead and move this down to 12 and a half. So two games out of his last 10, he's gone over the 12 and a half prop. But I like the way this looks. 
Uh, it is always risky taking the under on players, but again, if you wanted to throw that into a six-man slip, you could. The numbers do support this play. And then another one that's a little off the off the beaten path from the same game. Rudy Gobert over on turnovers. Now, he is turning the ball over basically two times a game. Two times in their last meeting when they play Sacramento this past weekend. But the reason I like this is if you have ever watched um, the Minnesota Timberwolves play, if you've ever watched Rudy Gobert handle the ball in the paint, it looks like he has a problem with hand-eye coordination. He fumbles the ball in the paint, like can't take a pass, can't take like, you know, a no look pass. It's like he gets nervous and like fumbles the ball. He'll either, you know, turn it over, uh, resulting like in a steal, or he'll just like fumble it out of bounds. And I've seen this happen a lot, especially in the playoffs when he was in Utah. I, I want to say Donovan Mitchell hit him with like three passes in the paint. It should have been easy dunks, easy layups, or at least a draw and a foul. And Rudy Gobert simply just bobbled, fumbled, and turned the ball over. And so, really, the more minutes he's on the court, the more chances he has to do that. So, this is like a super risky play because you can't predict turnovers. But I think the data supports this, and his game, his style of play supports this as well. So, Rudy Gobert over on turnovers, and um, De'Aaron Fox under his... De'Aaron Fox under his um, first half points. I hope they didn't take his turnovers off the board. So there we go. Over one and a half turnovers for Rudy Gobert. I like the over on this one as well. And yeah, I think that's going to do it. One other play. One more play. Again, this one more play. I don't think, you know, this is not what I consider a core play. But DeAndre Ayton over 32 PRA. The reason I'm mentioning this is I did a lot of research on this game, so I at least want to share the research I did, uh, even if it's not a core play. But so DeAndre Ayton over uh, PRA first half and full game. One thing that I, I, I noticed when looking at his uh, shot chart, 70% of his shots are, are being taken in the paint. Uh, the league average is 60, so that means he's getting a lot of close to the rim looks. He's you know that stupid little hook shot he has that he misses, but. <laughs> He's getting tons of opportunity to score in the paint. He will be the biggest dude on the court. I understand that Toronto is scrappy and they're long and they have wingspan of like dinosaurs and stuff, but <laughs> size is size. And DeAndre Ayton is bigger than anybody that Toronto will roll out there. The average size of the Toronto front court is six foot eight and 230 pounds. This is a huge size mismatch for Phoenix to exploit. I like DeAndre Ayton over this. And it looks like over the last few games, they have really been trying to use him correctly in the paint. Chris Paul has been getting him easy looks in the paint. Um, I just like his PRA today over 32 and a half. And uh, one thing about DeAndre Ayton is when Chris Paul is on the court, I personally have seen that DeAndre Ayton's first half uh, production is really good. It's almost as if he is the focal point in the first half. They really want to get him uh, used. They really want to get him involved early. So I like those two lines. Uh, consider that if you want to put that in a slip with Chris Paul. You can't just play those two together, but you can throw them in like a three or four man slip and kind of leverage that whole game. If you feel like the production will be funneled through those two players, that's a great way to uh, kind of hedge your props. But that is going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my three core plays. Ivy over points. Draymond Green over PRA. Chris Paul over PRA. We have Kuzma and D'Angelo Russell uh, are mentions from my first video. And then some um, honorable mentions. Fox under first half points. And then Rudy Gobert over his uh, turnovers at 1.5. Thank you so much for stopping by the video. Check in checking it out and just uh talking some basketball props with me today truly appreciate the time you've taken out of your schedule to do that 
Do me a favor and drop a comment below with your favorite player prop on the day. Who do you have your eyes on? Who have you locked in already? Also, let me know what you think about these observations. What do you think about this core of players, my honorable mentions, my risky plays? Let me know in the comments below. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you love them? Do you want to leave them? Either way, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Once again, thanks for stopping by the channel and just chilling out with me. And until my next video, Chavez is out.